I've got a massive mailbag. Stick around and see what I've got this time. I've got loads of stuff. I've got to be carried away. Well, the first time's a bit concerning because it's a repackaged item and it says it is damaged from insufficient packaging. So let's see what actually turns out being mm, concerning. Well, it certainly has been through the walls and it's all a bit ripped open. And I've got a state at the front of it. It's like I've been dragging it along the ground or walking over it or something. I don't know. <laughs> let's have a look. Hopefully it's not too badly damaged. Well, the plastic cases, these are displays. This one's cracked. We'll look at this one first. This one's got a big crack in it. The other ones look pretty much all right. SPI OLED displays. These things are expensive too. Hopefully the packaging saved them. So I think these are 2.4 inch, I think they were. This is what I intend to use in my project. They also came with the little header. So that's fine. It looks intact. Let's check for the next one. Doesn't look to be cracked. One forgot lucky. Looks like I got lucky. Here you go, this is right on the top there, 2.42 inch, 7 pin, this be what I did. I think we got lucky. Yeah, I think this foam packaging has saved them. That was lucky. This is what I'd be most concerned about because of the cracked it means it's been squashed, but that seemed to be okay. This is nothing obvious. Whew. That's a relief. Anyway, these are from my project. I need, need to replace the display with a much bigger one because one that's on there is way too small. So I'm glad these have arrived. What's in here? Well, Oh, you know what's in here. So I already had the overall season one. Watch that. I thought it was all right. A bit wooden acting in some places, especially from Seth MacFarlane. He ain't the best actor. I quite like the show in a way. You know, it got better as it went on, as I always do when they first released season two. I'll watch this over Christmas, hopefully. We'll see how we go. Now, it didn't specify zone when I purchased it. You know, zone four. That's fine. That's all good. So no issue there. Excellent. Nerds unite. Nerds. Hmm. What are these? It's got the correct plug on at least. 5 volt 3 amp. Alright, ah, 5 volt 3 amp USB micro. And there's the specs. Hard to think you get 3 amps with one of these little plugs. But that's what they're ready for. I guess we'll see. Now this was for the Raspberry Pi, which I've got sitting right here, which I intend to do something with. So I needed the power supplies for that, but I didn't have power supplies because stupid me forgot to get one. So now I've got a couple of them. Because I've got two Raspberry Pis in here. Might be fragile things. So they're all packaged. So the package I can't get it out. Okay. Lower modules, I would check. They look suspicious like lower modules. Uh, that's easy real knife. Antenna and a module. Raw 868 megahertz or 915 megahertz OLED. A lot of this came about when I wasn't quite sure what I was going to end up using, so I've got some pin headers there and a power cable. Design produced by someone under there. Can't see it. Okay, so we have a Aussie little 0.96 inch OLED display on here. USB powered, and we should have an ESP32 on the back there. There you go, ESP32. You can actually see it's better on camera than I can see it myself. Um, Aussie Wi Fi antenna there, which has this design issue potentially with a screw right next to it. Maybe it's a bit close for my liking. Could affect the tuning. Well, those are users for that bracket there for the display. I just lift that one out. TT Go, these are known for having issues with a really Wi Fi design, so yeah. I bought a couple of them because I, I bought a whole bunch of wireless stuff, like all these LoRa modules, because this project I'm working on, I'm just trying different things to see what's going to work best. So I've got a whole range of things. I will be doing a video on the project as well, just showing you what I've been working on. That's the flash chip for the ESP32 because it doesn't have any internal flash for boot up, it just uses external flash. CP202, there we go, that's the uh, driver for the USB and power supply stuff on this side. What I'm basically using is an ESP32, right now is my project, ESP32 with this exact display on it. This is certainly a lot more compact, but obviously then you've got restrictions about which pins you can use, depending on which ones have been allocated to the display. So you've got 16, 17, 4, 2, 15, 5, 18, 23, 19, don't know, don't know, can't see what that is, SRT? I don't know. TXIX ground, uh, 3.3 volt, 5 volt ground again. Down this side, a lot of these pins you can't see what they are. I'm actually, when you solder onto these pins here, they've been really close to that antenna, which is probably not a good thing. 36 is it? 36, 39, 33, 35, 32, 33. 8, did I say 33 already? 25, 26, 22, 14, 12, 13, and something else on that one. Yeah, the pin labeling's not wonderful, is it? I don't know. There's still a lot crammed onto it though. You have to be a bit considerate of that. Oh, I've got loads more to do. And this one. Thanks for Patreon supporters. 
I must say bloody close. Right, thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me out. And anyone that likes the videos, it helps as well. If you give us a thumbs up, that does actually help. Or subscribing, if you're not really subscribed, clicking the bell icon so you get notifications. And all that good stuff. And um, sharing the video, that's also very helpful. If there's anything interesting you think other people might be interested in. So these are some ESP32s. Room? I don't know how you pronounce that. W Room. These are the same modules I'm already using. I thought I'd stock up on these whilst I could get them. For six or six more. So I've now got seven, eight. Yeah, I've got eight of these modules now. So I'm, I'm expecting this is going to be like the, the module I end up using because it's got the built in Wi Fi and Bluetooth, heaps of inputs and outputs. Basically, everything is available to use apart from the one just goes to flash because you know you can't use those anyway. So don't go there. These work well. So much more there. I think I might need to sharpen my RAM knife. iPhone 5, 5S, 6P, 6S, which one is it? It's a BASUS. I mean, maybe it works on all the phones. iPhone 6S battery. Now, I've had these BASUS, and the quality has been excellent every time, so I've, I've got some more. Now, these are basically me stocking up with stuff. I don't need them right now. Well, my battery, I replaced it about a year ago. I'll probably need to do it again at some point. It's not holding charge as well as it should, I don't think. And that's just the toolkit that comes with it. I've seen these before. I'll be links down below anyway. I'm buying so much stuff lately, it's ridiculous. I've been buying so much. Well, it's all packaged, I'm getting that much. The layers in. Cool, this took ages to arrive. It's here now, that's a good thing. It's an iCopy Plus. It's supposed to be able to hook up to batteries and stuff like that with this thing. And check them, apparently. Fairly expensive unit, but I think I've needed it enough times to sort of wonder about whether I should get one. Vibrator, light sensor, true tone display, repair, instrument, and battery testing. So you can look out the display and get some pieces and test them out to make sure they work. It's got English as well, that's good. So you've got this board here you can plug in. Got these adapters. It's a Quan Li on off. Is it charged up? I don't know. Probably not. It's, been it's taken a long time to get here, so it's not surprising. So this actually just plugs in, so you can actually unplug that module and plug this one in to the different functions. And you can read and write codes off of things like displays. So if you're trying to replace a display and it's coded, you can read the code off and write it to the new display. That kind of thing. Same thing for the batteries too, I think. Which way up it goes. It could be that way up, I'm guessing. This has also got the battery connectors on it. For what we've got from the 5 up to the X, that's what it covers. And this one is display and touch. So it's like you can plug the flex straight in maybe. Oh no. Data lines, interestingly. And vibrator for the 7 up to the X. So you've got display connection for the XX Max, 7R8, 7P, 8P, XXS, and XR. So this doesn't matter for anything prior to the 7, I don't believe. But the main thing I've got this for is the battery, and this is just future-proofing. Pretty cool. Expensive, but pretty cool. Ah, it's another display. Okay, it's another e-paper display. So I literally go. It's got an ESP32 on there too, on the back of it, I think. With, yeah, it's got the Wi-Fi and things. It's got an ESP32 built into it. With a display, it's got some buttons and stuff on it as well. At the top there, I've just got to figure out how to use them. I might be using this as a main part of my project, where um, this can be like a standalone unit and it transmits data to another unit via Wi Fi or potentially Bluetooth. It might be using Bluetooth, I'm not sure yet. Either that, I might be putting some LoRa modules on it. It's quite a big one. Double bag. It's a wire. Oh, this might be battery holders. Yeah, there's an England here somewhere. Okay, as you can see, I've stocked up on battery holders. <laughs> these are the for 18650s. The links down below, obviously. So you can put two of these in series, and we get about between six and eight volts or so off the batteries, which is great for a little portable device because then you can step that down to say five volts or 3.3 volts, whatever you're using, or both. And I've also got some single ones as well. So if depending on how I hook it up and what I end up designing in the end, because you put two in parallel instead and have twice the current, or up in series and have twice the voltage, obviously. I wasn't quite sure which I was going to need. I think I'm going to go with this dual pack. Um, but you can still do the same with these, obviously, but it gives you flexibility about where you put them. You know, this is obviously going to require a big block in space. Whereas these, I could put them in like two different places and split them out. I've got flexibility there about how I use them. Thanks for watching till the end as well. Really appreciate it if you're still sticking with me, that really helps. Just past 9,000 subs. So at the time we're um, recording this thing, by the time you see this, it might be closer to 10,000. I've got a backlog. Oh, nothing too exciting. Just an audio cable. Very short 
3.5mm cable, a 3.5mm stereo plug, but it's very robust. Look at the size of this thing. It's like an XLR cable kind of thing. Can I get one of these apart and have a look? Why not? So it's good to go. It's got a nice clamp on there. It's got a sleeve, is it? Or just a piece of strip? Yes, a piece of strip. There we go, slide that back. So the shield is going to the, to the gripper there. Solder looks all right. Looks fine. Not sure about the cable clamp being like that though. It doesn't look wonderful, but I guess they couldn't get around the actual cable because it's so big. But it's on the shielding, so yeah, I suppose it's right. I wouldn't yank on it, put it that way. Put it back together. So these, I thought, well, I'll get one of these thinking I might need it for my project, but it's a bit short really. It might be a kind of final project when the item's finished being developed and it's going to be sitting right next to where it's got to go. I was looking for some kind of robust cable. So this is quite robust looking, but is it going to do the job? I don't know. Maybe. You know, give it a yank, it's going to rip it out probably, but mm, we'll see. It's a nice plug though. Quite robust looking plugs, they're quite nice. It'll be links down below. So thanks for watching. Click the bell icon and subscribe and share the video. Comment down below if you want to have a chat about any of the items here. Advice even, especially with the ESP32 and the LoRa stuff. I've been really struggling with LoRa, trying to get it to work. So the modules I bought previously, I just cannot get to communicate with the SPI. I just can't get it to work. It drives me nuts. Thanks for watching, catch you later. And I'll catch you down below in the comments. Down there, you know, click the thing, have a chat. Right there, do it, down there. Bye. In, is the other way.